Senator Tom Cotton was the author of the open letter to Iran telling them that a peace deal is irrelevant because once Obama's gone, they won't honor it. Well, he went on Morning Joe to discuss this. Let's watch. Uh, so let's start with the Daily News. Uh, your picture, very good picture of you, by the way. Uh, but they're calling you a traitor, uh, saying that you've undercut the president of the United States, despite the fact they themselves are accusing the president of fecklessness in these negotiations. What do you say to these charges? Well, Joe, I and 46 other senators are simply speaking for the American people. Your own network just released a poll that said 71 percent of Americans don't think a deal that the president is negotiating will stop Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. The point we're making to Iran's leaders, who, if you talk to many Iran experts, will say don't understand our Constitution, is that if Congress doesn't approve a deal, Congress won't accept a deal now or in the future. Uh, what about the president accusing you of uh, being in, in, in co taking up common cause? with the hardliners in Iran. Joe, there are nothing but hardliners in Tehran. They've been killing Americans for 35 years. They killed hundreds of troops in Iraq. Now they control five capitals in the Middle East. There are nothing but hardliners in Tehran. And if they do, if they do all those things without a nuclear weapon, imagine what they'll do with a nuclear weapon. That's why we're trying to stop them from getting a bomb. Um, S S Senator, if I could just uh, ask you what you think of Vice President Biden's statement on this letter, uh, in part where he says that this was expressly designed to undercut a sitting president in the midst of a sensitive international negotiation, and that it's beneath the dignity of an institution he reveres. I don't know about traitor, but aren't you guys tampering with an international negotiation? Isn't this undermining the president and the process? And wasn't that the point here? No, we're making sure that Iran's leaders understand that if Congress doesn't approve a deal, Congress won't accept a deal because we're committing to stopping Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. Joe Biden, as Barack Obama's own Secretary of Defense has said, has been wrong about nearly every major foreign policy and national security decision in the last 40 years. No, he hasn't. Biden was one of the only people right about Iraq when he spoke about decades ago that Iraq is not a real country. It should be split up into three separate countries. You should have one area for the Sunnis, one for the Shias, one for the Kurds. He was screaming about that all along, and he was right all along, and because we don't listen to people like Joe Biden, we're currently in a situation like we're in right now. What does that even mean, he's been wrong about every foreign policy decision for, for his entire career? Did, uh, Joe Biden rose to prominence when uh, he famously went after the Reagan administration because the Reagan administration was going soft on the apartheid South Africa government. And he came along and said, how could anybody support this openly racist government? Are you kidding me? We absolutely need to do sanctions. We absolutely need to try to put pressure on them to fix their internal political situation. You're going to call that guy wrong on every foreign policy issue. Every foreign policy issue. What a sick, pathetic joke this guy Tom Cotton is. And this is the same guy who, not too long ago, was talking about how he wants more people in Guantanamo Bay. He, he mentioned earlier there about, you know, other people, they really don't understand the Constitution. No, you don't understand the Constitution. Guantanamo Bay is wildly unconstitutional. The Eighth Amendment... Uh, protects from cruel and unusual punishment. It can't be administered by the U.S. government. But we are doing that, and we're specifically doing that in Guantanamo Bay, and you want to expand it. So you're the person who hates the Constitution, not other people. And by the way, legal experts across the board have come out now and said, you have no clue what the fuck you're talking about when they say, oh, when Obama leaves office, this agreement doesn't stand. It's not true at all, not remotely true. Uh, things that need to be approved by Congress are spending bills. Spending bills have to originate in Congress. This is not a spending bill. I mean, this is the same authority that allows the president and the executive branch to negotiate for protection for our troops. So, for example, when they uh, say, hey, we don't want any of our American troops to be prosecuted in Iraq, and we need to make a deal to allow that to be the case where they don't get prosecuted in Iraq. The same authority that gives them the right to negotiate that is the same authority that gives them the right to negotiate any kind of peace deal, any kind of talks with regards to stuff like nuclear weapons. And it's not just America that's at the table. It's all the major world powers. And... 
It's a well-known fact that when you talk about international treaties and things established by the UN, those need to be upheld regardless of what your internal politics say. You can have an administration that says, well, we disagree with the Geneva Conventions. That doesn't mean you can legally not abide by the Geneva Conventions when a previous president signed on to it. God, the guy has no fucking clue what he's talking about. It's just absolutely embarrassing. And it, let's be clear about this. By one of the definitions of treason, the crime of betraying one's country, this is exactly what Tom Cotton is doing. He and the other 46 Republicans who signed on to this are saying, even if you get a peace deal and the terms are fantastic and the terms make us safer in America, we're going to uh, be against it and we're going to try to sabotage it by any means necessary. So you are putting the country in more danger. You are betraying the country and betraying the American people. And I love when he just made up that, you know, the American people don't want to uh, have negotiations with Iran by citing a poll that has nothing to do with that. Because you want to know what happens when you ask that exact question? A Washington Post ABC poll uh, asked respondents if they would support such an agreement with Iran for uh, nuclear negotiations. 64% said yes. Only 30% said no. So you're citing some other irrelevant poll that's not the direct question. Well, here's the direct question. And 64% say yes. So you're not standing up for the American people. My ass, you're standing up for the American people. And then when he says, well, Iran has been uh, killing Americans for, for however many years. Really? Care to give any examples of that? Please. I'll wait. No, you know what he means? He's referring to when we invaded Iraq and some Shiite militias started fighting. He views that as Iran. So if somebody's connected to somebody who's connected to somebody who might be connected to Iran or not, or if uh, the militias are Shiite and the Iranian government is Shiite, well, that's close enough. Uh, we blame the Iranian government. No, you want to know who's been meddling in the other's affairs? We've been doing it to them, you idiot! These guys always... Uh, always make clear that they have no clue about American and Iranian history. In 1953, we went in there, we overthrew their democratically elected government and the leader, Mohammad Mossadegh, all because Mohammad Mossadegh said, when I get power, I will nationalize the oil industry, stop giving the oil to the West, and I will uh, make the people of Iran rich off their own resources. How's that fucking crazy idea? And we said, we can't have that. We can't have true democracy and a representative leader. So we, the CIA admits that they they overthrew that guy, they put in the Shah, who's a puppet dictator who did our bidding and gave us the oil, and then we have the nerve to turn around today and say, you know, I just can't trust these people. We can't trust them. And what, you think they can trust us? Look at what we've done to them! Look, don't misunderstand me, man. I understand that the religious nature of the government is unacceptable, but you need to understand that the reason why there's been an increase in radicalization and fundamentalist beliefs in Iran is because we fucked with their internal affairs for so long, and those were the only groups that were talking about taking their country back at the time. People need to understand history. They need to understand the facts. They need to understand... Uh, uh, everything that went on between America and Iran, we're not an 100% angel in this situation. Finally, we have an administration uh, under President Obama that's stepping up and they're saying, let's, uh, let's come to some sort of a mutual agreement and let's get peace here, a lasting peace. Let's forget all this crazy stuff in the past, just like he did with Cuba. And what are the Republicans doing? They're saying, no! And he acts like President Obama is saying, under this deal, we're, we want to give them a nuke. They themselves say they don't even want a fucking nuke! And then Obama also said, they're not going to get a nuke. So what are we talking about here? You want to know what the key, the key uh, difference is? The Obama administration, and by the way, uh, international law, they're okay with uh, Iran having uh, centrifuges that they can enrich to the point to have legit energy for their energy grid. That's it. That's it. So, number one, again, that's permissible under international law. Number two, the Democrats are okay with that, and they're working that out as part of the deal. But the Republicans are saying, no, no energy whatsoever. That's going to have to go away, too. No actual energy for the, uh, for the power grid from, from uh, nuclear energy. You want to talk about being unreasonable. That's beyond unreasonable. That's just mind-numbingly stupid. That's low IQ, knuckle-dragging, idiotic. And they're going to make the United States of America 
less safe as a result of this. They're going to make Israel less safe as a result of this. And of course, they're going to make the people of Iran less safe as a result of this. So they're absolutely sabotaging the peace deal by any means necessary. And any other bullshit argument or rationalization they try to give you is totally untrue. And you just saw it with your own eyes.